Hey there, welcome to day 990 of What's You Up To Now. Sharon Hornell from here, documenting the journey as I transition from the brick and mortar world of business, the real world of businesses in corporate America, to the online world of business. Day 990, so obviously been doing this for, for about three years, a little longer because I didn't really hop online. I didn't start using a video version or video journal to keep track of what I was doing until she's at least eight months or maybe a year into my online journey in 2016 I sold my last business with my ex-husband and needed something to do I was old enough to retire but I really didn't want to retire because I still have energy left but so I guess I was I was old but so too old to go back to corporate America or think I wanted to do that and I've always been curious about the internet. I've always been curious about the World Wide Web, as we used to call it, or the online world. And I wanted to explore it. And I had the opportunity to, to jump in and learn and play and figure stuff out. Now, maybe I gave myself too much time to learn and play and figure stuff out because that led me down a whole lot of rabbit holes and a whole lot of, I made a whole lot of mistakes, rookie mistakes. I call them rookie mistakes because they were absolutely positively rookie mistakes, yet almost everybody falls into them. We get online and we start to go down and I didn't think I would. I don't know why I didn't think I would probably because I've done so many businesses offline that I figured I would just pop online and I would just duplicate that success online. But it'd be even easier because there's the promise of everything online is so much easier than it is offline. Uh, parts of that are true. Parts of it are absolutely positively false depending on who we are and what we bring to the online world. I brought a lot of offline world business knowledge to the online world and found out that people in the online world don't use and don't value a whole lot of that at all. They do things differently. They take shortcuts. They have different values and different goals and different objectives than we do in certain aspects of the offline world. And that was things that I needed to reconcile in my brain and my understanding. So uh, fell into some of the biggest potholes that so many other people do thinking naively that I somehow wouldn't I wouldn't fall into the I just have to learn one more thing I have to learn one more thing I have to learn one more thing pothole I fell into that for a couple of years then I fell into the uh, comparing myself to others pothole which is weird because I didn't do that in my offline businesses I just did my own thing but online I maybe it's the aspects of social media and the interactions and the uh, the way things are presented, but definitely got sucked into, and I didn't realize it at first, that I was looking at and watching other people and then comparing myself to others. And instead of moving forward with what I wanted to do and what I knew was right for me, I would I would stop or I would second guess or I would not do things that I knew I wanted to do or try. And then I tried things that I totally knew I didn't want to try because the gurus were saying that's what you needed to do. So there's there's so many lessons to be learned in the online experience and especially in the online experience of going from the offline to the online world. Um, there's a lot of stuff you can just skip that everybody will teach you that you have to do and have to know how to do, but you absolutely positively don't. And then there's a very basic, very true framework that if you just follow step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, boom, you'll get a heck of a lot more success if you stay on that path and only learn what you need to learn as you go up your little ladder of, of your path um, versus getting sidetracked in all the ways you can get sidetracked. There are millions of ways you can get sidetracked online. There are so many things vying for our attention. It's amazing that um, I didn't get stuck in a learning loop for 10 years. You know, I was only there about two, but um, it could have been much, much longer. For a lot of people, it is much, much longer. And I guess probably before I even came online, I was sort of in a in a curiosity loop, right? Where I was just curious. And so I'd follow a rabbit hole of something I was curious about. And then I'd get curious about something else and I'd follow that rabbit hole. But that was okay because I wasn't really doing anything in this world. Now I'm doing things in this world and it's there's lots of rabbit holes. There's any way you can possibly imagine that you want to do something, you could possibly do it. Then there's everybody under the sun trying to sell you their system, their way of doing things. And it's it's up to you to figure out and feel what's right for you. So today, get up and go challenge day 14. And I'm of course sharing my soap framework. I'm not selling my soap framework. I'm sharing my soap framework because that's what works for me in terms of dealing with change and dealing with challenges. 
Um, and so today was the A in SOAP, and that's all about taking action, right? Nothing happens until we take action. We can learn and learn and learn and learn. We can compare ourselves to others and not do anything, but it's when we actually physically do something that we learn the most and that we actually get the results. You don't get any results if you're sitting on the couch. So that's um, our lesson for today. And I am doing, um, there's seven key areas of our life, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial, relationships, and contribution. And so I picked the physical key. And I, I think I've done that in all the challenges so far, in, in all of the 30-day challenges. I picked the physical one first. Why? Because physical is the one that taught me my biggest life lesson. My biggest life lesson was so far has been if you ignore your physical well-being long enough, you will get a wake-up call. Your physical well-being, if you, if you take advantage of yourself and you don't take care of yourself for a long enough time, you'll get messages, but you'll get a big wake-up call. And I got the biggest possible wake-up call uh, that, that anyone can get and still be here to talk about it. Um, in 2010 with a sudden cardiac arrest. And since then, my life had to massively change or I wouldn't still be here talking to you today. So uh, physical is the one I tend to start with because it's the clearest message in my life of you got to pay at least a little bit of attention to each area or aspect of your life or it will get your attention. Um, COVID-19, I look at COVID-19 maybe a little differently than a lot of people do. I think that as a global world as a global economy there's been a whole lot of crap going down in our country in our world not our country in our country too but in the world for a really long time and we have been asleep to it the majority of us have been asleep to it we've been just going about our merry way living our little lives doing our own thing being very you know orbitally self-centered and not really paying attention and like our physical well-being our world has a physical well-being. Our, our planet has a physical well-being. And if we're not paying attention, something will happen to get our attention. I think, to be honest, we were very economically focused. And as a society and a world, if we're focusing on money, 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 economy, making money, you know, getting ahead all the time, we're ignoring the other aspects of our world. And what is more important than our most important resource, which is our human beings and their health. And if we're not paying attention to it, and we haven't been paying attention to it, right? Um, people are heavier, me included, because of during COVID-19, why I'm paying attention to physical. But people are less healthy and heavier than, and more complacent and more self-centered and more um, focused on the wrong things than we've ever been. And just like in my own life, I feel like we've gotten this global wake up call to say, hey, pay attention to yourselves, pay attention to your individual health, but also pay attention to your collective health as a as a world, as a as a planet, as humanity and see what happens. So um, different, very different perspective on COVID than I think a lot of people have. Um, I don't know. I like to step back and look at things and just see what I see. Sometimes I see stuff. Sometimes I don't. I'm blind to a lot of things, literally and figuratively. But I think that um, there's so many gifts in the challenges that we face um, and we don't want to miss them. If we miss them, guess what? We're subject to repeat them. And I, I've learned that um, in my own in my own life, especially um, if I don't pay attention to my physical well-being, it will get my attention. If we don't pay attention to our global well-being, our global physical health, it will get our attention. How that happens, there's all kinds of conspiracy theories around that. Don't know. Don't know what's true and what isn't. I'm sure it'll come out someday. But the truth is, it happened, and it happened not to harm us, but to make us better, to make humanity better. At least I like to believe it, it happened to make humanity better. And I think we will be better for it. Yeah, are there challenges? Absolutely. But are they things we can figure out and overcome? Positively, we, we sure can, and we sure will. We are a resilient breed. So fun challenge today was about our bad characteristics, things that we're bad at, and to have fun with that, and to, to realize that the bad in us is just as important as the good in us. We're, we are not balanced, but we are human beings, and so we are a combination of bad and good, positive and negative, strong and weak. It, it's just who we are inherent in 
who we are as human beings. We are human beings, and uh, that makes us imminently interesting and, and uh, miraculous, yet flawed at the same time. So that was our fun challenge today was to just share something that's that people that we consider bad about ourselves. I guess it doesn't matter what other people consider bad about us. For example, I think being klutzy and disorganized is is maybe not awesome. It's not horrible, but it's kind of bad. I will always wish I was more coordinated and more organized. Um, so I put those things down, things like that. Other people might think they're bad. Other people might be like, oh, my God, you're super coordinated compared to me because everything is relative. So it was our fun challenge today. Uh, supersize your business challenge. The idiom today is one I have actually, I don't think I've ever heard of it. It's cheek by jowl. And I think of jowls as the wobbly cheeks on dogs or, yeah, mostly dogs or some other animals that have wobbly cheeks. But it just means super close together, packed together and in close proximity, which normally I'd have a hard time working that one in but with COVID-19 it's pretty easy because one of the most important things we need to do is physically distance from one another so we don't you know spread COVID-19 to one another so that that made it pretty easy but I don't recall I, I know I've never said cheek by jowl until today and I don't recall ever hearing anyone say cheek by jowl so I'm not sure where it's a popular expression but it's been around since it said 600 AD and then William Shakespeare used cheek by cheek, which of course I've heard cheek by cheek and used cheek by cheek. And I think more of um, piled in like sardines or packed like sardines or packed in like sardines to be close together and in close proximity um, than I do cheek by jowl or cheek to cheek. Cheek to cheek things makes me think of dancing. I don't know. So that was our idiom for today. Working on another not another project, just an, a, a deeper dive on a project that I've been working on. <clears throat> Started doing a 22, uh, it's a, as part of a 30 day challenge I was doing with Avil Beckford. I'm doing a, uh, a deep dive into to some of the books that I started reading during that 30 day challenge. During the 30 day challenge, we're challenged just to consume books in like under an hour, depending on the book. And so some of them, and what I like about her challenges are, we get exposed to a lot of different resources and then we get to decide if we want to go back and dig deeper into those. So there's a couple of those that I want to dig more deeply into. Um, one is about um, laws of well-being, which fits right into the challenge I'm doing. It's all about well-being, right? Getting up and going is all about increasing our well-being in all of the areas and aspects of it. That's what I'm working on today granddaughter this afternoon it turns out every Wednesday they have early release in I don't know if in kindergarten or in school altogether but um, in kindergarten she does so we get to hang out and see her every Wednesday afternoon which I am loving because I'm definitely going through granddaughter withdrawal all right have an awesome day if I can help you in any way hit me up in the comments below otherwise I will be with you tomorrow with another update of what I'm doing as I transition from the brick and mortar world corporate world of real businesses actually 27 different businesses and industries and over a quarter century in corporate America to the online world. Take care. Bye. I haven't done 27 businesses online yet. I don't think. I better count them and then I'll let you know.